Welcome to the Vial Balance HealthCast, episode number 287. The PSA test is misunderstood and scary. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. It used to be that all I had to worry about was telling people they had an abnormal pap, which is a screening test, and then evaluating them to make sure that they didn't have cancer, and 90% of them didn't. So now I have to worry about telling someone, a man who's definitely afraid of having prostate cancer, any man is, that when I did their screening PSA, that it was abnormal. I, I had a particular case in the recent past where I did a blood test, a series of many blood tests, and because of the way our lab works, the patient got the blood test before I did. So he had the blood test, and his PSA was normal. It was less than four, which is normal. It went up by 0.6 in a year, 0.6. And he totally had a meltdown because he was sure that many had prostate cancer. So it wasn't in the- Men are terrified of of prostate cancer. I know that. I know it's like breast cancer and cervical cancer for us. The joke among men that I've been hearing for 20 plus years is if something else doesn't kill you and you live long enough, you'll die of prostate cancer. That's because prostate cancer is a disease of old men. Yeah. And it's not usually a disease of young men. But this gentleman was middle, not old, and he was terrified. And it took me a while to peel him off the ceiling and say, this is a normal test, but I'd be glad to repeat it because... I have to ask you some questions. Did you did you prep for this test like you're supposed to? Uh-huh. Did you avoid... Nobody knows. No one has ever told me that except you. I know. Not my regular physician. I know. And they do They do know. I mean, it's in... If you look at the lab... Well, I know the doctors know. The doctors so know, but they don't tell don't anybody. Know. Right. But you, you open you open the uh, lab test and right. it says this is the prep that you should do. Right. So the prep is no sex for 72 hours before the test. And that means sex with yourself as well. No masturbation. No, no prostate exams for 72 hours before the test. No riding bicycles. No, no aerobic exercise. Nothing that is going to cause the prostate to, to be j- jiggled, Suffused. damaged, anything. Yeah, right. So you don't want it to be, you don't want it to be palpated by the doctor. You don't want it to have any kind of, any kind of pressure on it. Let sleeping dogs lie. But many people in my practice have a hard time withhold, withholding, keeping themselves from having sex for 72 hours. Oh, I have to say riding bikes. <laughs> but that's why I asked this gentleman. And he said, oh, no, I did all that. Yeah. I rode on the KD Trail. I, uh, uh, I said, well, <laughs> it's normal. I wonder how low it's going to be when we repeat it and you withhold from all that. He goes, God, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. I said, well, you have to. If you're that worried about this, you have to not do any of those things for three days. Then we're taking your test. Then you're free to go mm-hmm. one time. But this will make him feel better. And I have not yet gotten the test back. But this is something that is going to ease his mind. The key here is we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be this trigger happy mm-hmm. with getting worried and upset because getting worried and upset is a bad thing in general anyway. Absolutely, for us. absolutely. And and the the other issue then is if you become convinced that you have prostate cancer, the treatments are also extremely anxiety provoking and problematic right. because there are some high risk things that can ruin the quality of life for men mm-hmm. from the treatment if the treatment doesn't go well. 
Right. And so, I mean, it, it all just confabulates in a man's mind to, oh, my God, I have cancer. I'm going to die. Right. It goes all the way to, I'm going to be impotent. Uh, I, I'm going to have, have to wear, depends, wear a diaper. I'll never be able to control my be, urine stream. Right. I mean, those are things that can happen with prostate surgery. So men do get concerned about this. Now they're getting more conservative about the surgery. Right. They're not doing total prostatectomies as often as they used to, but that is a huge issue. And people can't take testosterone or are told they can't take testosterone right. after they have prostate cancer. Well, they're told that because the common medical wisdom uh, <laughs> has been that high levels of testosterone increase the chances that, that a man will get prostate cancer. So if you are taking replacement testosterone, then you the, the historical this is what they believe, but has been that you're running a balance risk between the quality of life that you want to have, and especially about sex drive, but muscle mass balance, uh, all the other good reasons to take testosterone against the increased risk of prostate cancer striking you. And so you and your doctor have to make a decision and, and it's a constant measuring of effect versus cost mm -hmm. and, and making choices about, well, what risks are you willing to take? But the fact but is, now we know something better. Now we know something better because there's there's um, we know it. We, there's a teaching and research doctor from Harvard. Yes, Abraham Morgan Taylor, and he has done all the research, but he also sees patients one on one. He also did research on the original research, right. That said, high levels of testosterone cause cancer. Right. And he went back and looked at the original the data, history of where that came from, and found that that wasn't what it said. I mean, it it's very much like the White House, uh, I mean, the uh, WHI study on women mm -hmm. uh, and, and Primarin right. that was erroneously interpreted and created the big scare that, that pulled women off of hormone replacement. I guess we were uh, lucky it only lasted 15 years and not, <laughs> and not like, a, this, is, this is back in the 40s. Yeah. One man. <laughs> For 60 years. It's we believe wisdom, something that one wisdom. man decided, and then he was really good at PR and marketing too, because one man had one patient that was given testosterone who got, who got prostate cancer, mm -hmm. one patient. That's where our wisdom has come from. And if you read his book, he goes through every single, I mean, it's a great book, yeah. every single thing Chapter that you seven. could, you could research right. to find out that we are believing something that's completely false. We have been hoodwinked or whatever you want to call it. And you want, I mean, we don't believe the right thing. So it also makes sense that, I mean, if you're 19, you've got the highest testosterone of your life. Right. And we don't see prostate cancer in 19 year olds. Right. That's not, that doesn't happen. And he, he did the, the test in his lab of taking cells from an older gentleman and a younger and younger men. And I guess biopsying all of these prostates and then then taking the blood from the older gentleman, putting it in with the young men's prostate cells and the other way around. And if they found, he found out or he discovered and published uh, a, t a paper that said that the young man's cells became abnormal with the old man's blood. blood. Yeah. That's low testosterone. And the old, old man's cells got better with the young man's blood. So that's high testosterone. So, He's literally proven that testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer. Well, so, so two points that, that he, he makes in his research. One is that if you get a call from your doctor that says your prostate test is abnormal, want to come in, we need to do some more testing, we need to find out whether or not you have cancer, and that terrifies you, that you should know that 70% of the tests that come back abnormal are non-cancerous. Only 30% are at risk for having cancer. And that's even like pre-cancer, not invasive cancer. So that, that's one thing. The second thing that he has found and has been publishing and, and his work has been validated by other researchers now. And, and so the message is going out in the medical community, but it's really slow to take hold, is that the risk factor is not high testosterone. It's low testosterone. That's right. And so hormone replacement to balance your testosterone levels to where they should be is actually a good health move in terms of fighting prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. But that's new thinking, <clears throat> new news 
in the medical community. That's right. That's right. And one of the things that doctors who didn't believe this, mm -hmm. when they did t take the step forward and give someone testosterone, then they took a PSA test right after that. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the very beginning of treatment, they found that the PSA had a, had a went up. Well, anything that happens to your prostate increases your PSA, obviously. So that, but then they didn't do the test a year later, which showed that the PSA comes down. After the prostate gets filled with testosterone, replenished. Right. Then, because the prostate's kind of, it gets kind of swollen and then goes back down. Right. That's when you should test it because it's, it's just filling up or being replenished, and that's, that gives you a high PSA for a short period of time. He did a one-year study of his patients, and in that year study, those individuals who had replacement testosterone increased the in that pool, had an increase in cancer diagnosis of 1.3%. That's true. And in the placebo group that did not receive the testosterone replacement, they had, that in the group of individuals had an increase in cancer diagnoses of 25%. Right. Those are, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. That is yeah. phenomenal. So, and, and then that st study is still ongoing because we've heard him speak since well, then yeah, at yes. different conferences. Mm -hmm. And that study's been ongoing, and it is being held up. Basically, the risk uh, is staying the same for both groups. So mm -hmm. if you get testosterone replacement, then you, you are at a lower risk for prostate cancer, not an upper risk or higher risk. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should kind of keep in mind before your doctor scares you to death. The, the new data shows that the increased risk <clears throat> of prostate cancer that men suffer from exactly parallels the decline of testosterone that their blood tests show. So one of the ways That's if you're amazing. concerned at all about prostate cancer is to make sure that you keep your, your testosterone tank filled right. so that your prostate uh, doesn't start playing games with itself and, and developing these cancer cells. Cancer is always an immune problem, mm -hmm. meaning you could have a great immunity and not take testosterone and never get prostate cancer. But if you have, if you're average, your immunity decreases, especially if you don't take testosterone. There's a lot of things in play here. Testosterone improves your immune system. So it works in both, in both ways. It's helping kill prostate cancer cells and it's helping the prostate become younger. So in that way, you're preventing, you're preventing cancer. But if you don't do anything, then and your immune system decreases and starts becoming old, and the cells are old in your prostate and they're not being fed with testosterone, it's a double whammy. And that's why people get prostate cancer as they get older. Well, as Paul Harvey used to say, that the rest of the story mm -hmm. is also interesting, and it, and it pulls away from the issue of prostate cancer, and <clears throat> diagnostic levels, and testosterone, and it goes to the issue of medical treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, because so many physicians are uneducated or are resistant to the message that this is a good thing, a proven thing, mm -hmm. and a helpful thing, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a, a, a client, a patient, who's caught between medical advice from two different physicians mm -hmm. that he respects and says, these are both my doctors and they don't agree. Which one should I follow? That's Which true. one should I do? And this is not a new thing for you in your practice. <laughs> yeah, I'm Other used to physicians now. may not agree with what you do. They may not know what you do, but they will make statements to their patients that are also your patients mm -hmm about the treatments that you provide, mm -hmm. the need for them, the validity for them, the cost of them, whatever it might be, without checking with you in a collegial way to <laughs> yeah, say, well, we share a patient, uh, can we talk about a treatment protocol so we're all on the same page? You know, Because they're not open to that. I'm the doctor, I decide, I'm the primary doctor, you're a flake. Uh, <laughs> and the patient is caught in the middle. And your friend was upset, anxious, angry, because he thought, based on what his doctor of long standing, I didn't mention that his doctor of long standing said, "This is going to kill you." You know what she's doing is going to kill you, and so he was terrified. What are you doing to me? 
And yeah. you have to deal with that as a friend, but as a physician, you have to deal with that on a regular basis mm-hmm. that patients come in and say, my doctor, I remember you were talking a few weeks back about a woman that came in and said, my doctor told me that you're going to give me breast cancer and I'm going to die, but I'm still going to come and do this. Because it's worth because it. I, and I said, I'm not going to give you breast cancer and you're not, I mean, this, yes, right. anybody on estrogen can get breast cancer. Right. Doesn't mean you're not going to get breast cancer. It just means that basically you're going to treat all your other problems. And yes, you might still get breast cancer. I still get mammograms every year. So, you so know, but I would like same, to speak to yes. other physicians who might be watching, but to patients who are caught in this bind with, with two different doctors telling them <clears> two <throat> radically different things who aren't talking it's, to each other. It's what, really, what do you it's advise really us hard. To do? It's really hard for patients who are caught in that. I have, I've had several people yes. not tell their doctors they're doing this Yeah. or say, oh yeah, I stopped. Because they just don't want the lecture, and they're going to continue to do it because they are better. They take less drugs. They take fewer, fewer. They have fewer sick days. They, I mean, it does a lot for us. So they feel healthier. All their tests look healthier. So they just don't tell their doctor. That's. I'm not saying that's a good idea. Well, that's for people who are confident. People who aren't confident then have to go and look for independent information. And that's why I, I give or suggest the, this book by Mor- Morgan Taylor, which is Testosterone for Life. That's what it's called. I, I have a physician, not you, <laughs> my family physician, that I have seen once a year for the last four years for maybe 10 minutes. And she orders my blood tests and stuff ahead of time. I go in, she looks at the blood tests, And one of the things she says is, your testosterone numbers are high for a man your age. But she's not concerned about that because she's also one of your patients. (laughs) And she knows that's true. What's going on with that. Mm -hmm. But it it is typical that people go in and see their doctor for Mm -hmm. ten minutes, unless they have chronic illnesses and a regular problem that needs to be addressed. A generally healthy person Mm -hmm. goes in and their doctor looks at that and says, Oh my God, your your testosterone number is really high. We need to get that down. And I say, Well but I'm getting testosterone treatments to get it up. Uh, literally, so to speak. Uh, and he says that those numbers are too high. They don't know what the appropriate dosage might be True. or why I might be getting them because they don't have the education that you have. And they were trained in a school that taught them this is not a thing we do. It's, it's also they were trained. Th- their mindset is one dose for everybody. Yeah. You know, the one, normal, the normal and the normal on the lab sheet isn't really normal. It's just kind of average for everybody your age. Right. So I'm looking to bring people back to young normal levels, mm-hmm. which is where everybody feels better and loses all their symptoms of testosterone deficiency. So I was trained and still do bring people back to young, healthy normals. Now where that falls apart is as we get older, the receptor sites that are all over our body that receive the testosterone either die or decrease in number or they become less sensitive to testosterone. So oftentimes I have to go above Mm -hmm. physiologic normal and a new study came out three weeks ago on women being given testosterone in pellet form Uh and they they decided, this was in Europe, it was... Uh, I can't remember the name of the researcher right now, but it was in Maturitis, um, March of 2016. And it came out with, with stating that oftentimes because of receptor sites and because each woman is an individual, you have to treat them with enough testosterone that relieves their symptoms, yes. no matter what that number is. So it's symptom analysis and treatment rather than statistical standard Analysis. They tried looking. They tried fitting everybody into a, a little box, giving well, them the are, same are amount. Competing theories in modern medicine: Do we treat to a to a computerized average protocol, mm-hmm. or do we treat to an individual with symptom adjustment? But you've had patients, men and women, who've come in because their physicians have looked at their data and said, "Oh my God, these testosterone numbers are too high. You'll get breast cancer." Oh my God, these testosterone numbers are too high. You'll get prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And there's so much research recent 
five years or less mm -hmm. research that is out there that says, no, 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 that is not accurate. And that is why Kathy puts that research listing on her website. So you can go to biobalancehealth.com and look at the research. You can ask your doctor to look at the research. Mm -hmm. You can ask your doctor to call Dr. Maupin and have a conversation mm -hmm. if there's a disagreement in treatment protocol. You're mm -hmm. open to that. You're receptive to that. Mm -hmm. You welcome that. You try to reach out to some doctors, and some of them respond very positively. Mm -hmm. The younger ones tend to. The older <laughs> ones are kind of like, you're a woman, you're a doctor, you're a gynecologist, you don't know what the hell you're doing. I've been doing this for 72 years. Leave me alone. Right. So... If I do it the way I learned in medical school 72 years ago. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's one of those things. We do remember a lot of the things we learned in med school. Leeches are coming back. Yeah. Well, actually, they are for plastic surgery sometimes. <laughs> I, know. I know. But that doesn't mean we treat everyone with leeches. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's very important to know your facts and have something to back them up. Right. And be able to have a conversation with your doctor, which is very hard for them because... I don't work on an insurance basis, so I have lots of time to spend with each patient. They can't do that, or they would go out of business in a day. If they spent an hour with you and got paid $35, that's not going to keep their uh, lights on. So they are being pushed by managed care to shorten the visit. So well, you, are, you are going to have to understand that. You're not going to be able to manipulate their time or be able to get more time unless you agree to pay for it. But and we're also trying to encourage important. you to do something that's very easy to say and it's very hard to do. And that is not be reflexively afraid because you hear a buzzword or you hear a note of concern. You want your doctor to be concerned. You want your doctor to say, wait a minute, I'm seeing something here that I don't understand and I don't like. Let's talk about it. Let's look into mm -hmm. it. But part of looking into it may be to make a phone call to Dr. Maupin, who is also mm -hmm. treating you and say, What's up with this? Help, help me mm -hmm. understand this. Or for you to get that research and present it to your doctor and say, this is what's going on and this is why. Uh, don't just be afraid because that anxiety will also make you very ill. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.